Hello, good day to everyone. I welcome you to the another episode on mold flows, tips and workflow. In this episode, we are going to discuss about the mold flows top 12 most view result. These top 12 results can be a part of your default mold flow report or can be some of it can be a part of your customized report as well. I'm going to demonstrate the workflow or the result interpretation using a dual domain mesh. In Moleflow, we know that we have three types of mesh, midplane, dual domain and 3D. I strongly recommend that you satisfy the mesh criteria before starting up the mesh or oh, analysis. Sorry. So, for the midplane or dual domain, the aspect ratio should be below 20 and for the 3D mesh, the aspect ratio should be below 50 and your mesh thickness or the mesh volume should be within the 2 to 3 percent of your CAD volume. For the 3D mesh, it would be much closer, could be less than 1 percent. And of course, for the demonstration purpose, I have chosen a fit system, which is a combination of the hot runner and the and the cold gate over here. It's a simple box or a container, particularly a food container uh, that I'm referring. It could be a, anything for purpose. So can be used. I'm going to demonstrate these workflow into the series of episodes so look forward for the further episodes for complete 12 results on that. In this episode I'm going to discuss basically four results and then later on episodes we will continue to discuss other four results and so on and so forth. I hope you are run the best gate location analysis as well as the molding window analysis to get started before the analysis. It's strongly recommended so that you get you know understanding on the processing parameters as well as the appropriate gate location. Let's get started. First and foremost think that I am going to view the results which is almost everybody views it but Let's look it into the different way how the field time results can be helpful over here. What things we should be viewing in the field time? Of course, we need to animate through the time interval and see how the filling pattern is happening or behavior of the filling pattern or characteristic of the filling pattern within the cavity. By default, it is a 12, 24 frames. I would recommend going up to like an 100 frames so that it gets more you know smoother flow it's all depend upon your uh, graphics quality or the graphics of your machine as well high rendering would be needed for it what things to be results to to be looked out in this in the fill time and the first and foremost thing is to check whether I'm my part is getting filled or not what is my fill time? You may be specifying the fill time, but it little exceeds than the fill, given fill time because of the compressibility of the material. So, whether my part is completely filled or no, one way to look at it is the log. Just now I had a look at it, and the other way is to looking at, you know, visually checking whether all of my reps or the thin walls in sections in my part are getting completely filled or not. And you can animate it as I showed it to you. Default is 24. You can go all the way to the to the 100 uh, frames or up to th 300 frames. You can go up to 300 frames. The other way to look at it is I often go and check it in the contour. So what does it help us to know? It helps us to know how the weld lines are getting formed. Like in this case, I 
can clearly see that there is a build line form over here okay so you can see the build line formed over here that's where the contours are meeting but what does the contour spacing between uh, between them uh, gives us the interpretation so bigger the contour spacing it means that the flow is moving very faster and wherever there is a you know convergence of the, there is a high density of the contours they are spacing between them is is very small they are you know crowded over here that could be a possibility that the hesitation is happening it will also help us to know the race tracking like the flow if the two flows are moving because of, of the gate one at the top and one at the bottom it can help us to know whether there is a race tracking happening in your part so instead of just looking at the shaded results i would recommend you to look at it onto the control plots as well to understand the well line locations the race tracking effect and also the aesthetic related uh, issues like the if it is there is a flow marks why the flow marks happen if there is a sudden change into the velocity of the flow it causes the flow marks then i would look at into the bulk temperature now bulk temperature is the velocity uh, velocity weighted uh, uh, or the flow velocity uh, weighted average results throughout the thickness what does it mean that it takes into consideration the all of the uh, results or the temperature distribution in the part through the complete cycle and throughout the wall thickness when you are using a dual domain results you get the highest resolutions across the thicknesses of the 20 layers well with the 3d mesh also you can go up to by default it is 10 layers you can go all the way up to 20 layers but that would count to the huge number of elements so benefit of using a dual domain mesh is that keeping a less number of elements and still you get a higher resolution of the layers through the thickness now what bulk uh, temperature results help us to interpret first and foremost i am going to scale it to the uh, to the time i'm sorry it's it's a uh, through the time so I'll, i'll go and check what's happening at the the time of uh time of uh, fill, filling or it, the time at which the filling has been uh happened so i'm going to go and check it at 1.4 uh that's where the my fill time is at i'm going to off my fit system and i'm going to look at that i could see us hot location or the hot spots in these areas and there is a little bit of the cold spots in this area as well as okay it's not been completely filled so that make sure that your part is completely filled and you're looking at the results when the part is just filled so that you're looking at the bulk temperature or average temperature through the to the thickness at the end of the fill i'm go going to look at that how much temperature has raised beyond my specified melt temperature i'm going to go and scale it up and uh, make sure that you of the extended results and my specified temperature for the melt was 240 and it has gone up to 200 uh, and 54 so these are the locations where temperature has risen significantly above the melt temperature so this i could call as an uh, a hot spots in the part or the regions where the temperature has risen raised during the filling and i, I can also look at the uh, you know uh, results where i can see the temperature drop that is happening uh that is happening uh, below the transition temperature for these material the transition temperature was around 150 but let's go and check it out so make sure that you keep it at uh, one 
1.4 so this is the time that I have completely filled the part I am going to look at the transition temperature or the temperature at which the solidification is going to happen so I am going to look at the areas where the solidification has happened so in this case my transition temperature is of uh, is 134 so I am going to look at the the scaling and check the areas where the temperature has fallen below the 134 is 134 degree centigrade so I could see that this is the area is a cold spot in this my region where the temperature has fallen and we, from the fill time you could clearly see that the weld line is forming but obvious between the two gates so it could be a very weak weld line that is forming and possibility of the part getting filled over here. I hope a uh, bulk temperature results was enough for you so next time try to include in, in, in your report. The other results that I am going to look at is, uh, is the clamp force. So clamp force is basically a, I check the areas uh, uh, where the clamp force at what time the clamp force is exceeding and also make sure that clamp force doesn't exceed you know, uh, more than 80% of the machine capacity that's where we try to restrict it also. Uh, well, you can go and scale it up and uh, see where the clamp force has exceeded. Like in this case, I'm going to you know check it uh, areas where the clamp force has exceeded. You could see that it's, uh, it's okay. I think I have mm, maybe this should be ten and this could be one yep okay so this takes me to the location where it shows that the clamp force is around like 702 at 1.5 seconds and so the other results that i am going to look probably the last results for this episode uh, is to look at your pressure plot uh, now there is a pressure plot available like the bulk temperature it's again a um, velocity uh, uh, through the velocity or, or the it's less up down to the velocity or the time dependent results um, with the average through the through the thickness of the part i can look at the temperature uh, pressure at end of fill and i strongly recommend that you look at the pressure with the fit system and without the fit system at the end of the fill and uh, check that the pressure doesn't exceeds uh, 75 to 80 percent maximum 80 percent of the machine capacity usually the machine has a capacity of around like 180 uh, MPA so try to keep it uh, you know uh, not more than 75 to 80 percent of the machine capacity usually uh, in mold flow we follow the thumb rule is that the pressure in the part should not exceed more than 80 MPA and or the with the fit system it should not exceed more than 100 MPA also but if the part is very thin walled and uh, probably you need that high pressure to be maintained so try to see that it doesn't exceed 75 to 80 MPS mm -hmm. and then you can look at the areas where the pressure is high uh, particularly I can go and look at, at the pressure at VP location um, this is just the situer, uh, the pressure the areas where the situer is going to happen or the packing or the hold on is going to start so look at the areas where the pressure may be high suppose in this case instead of like 164 uh, it would have been like in 160 or 170 definitely I would have looked at the areas the pressure would be uh, high so there is a chances that those areas may have a flashing um, or the areas uh, which are having a very low pressure probably can cause a problem related to the packing so try to maintain a uniform pressure distribution in the part during the packing stage and uh, pressure results can be very helpful in deciding your packing profile as well um, particularly understanding that uh, like in this case I am trying to see that uh, at what time and 
at where the pressure distribution is there and what are the sections of the part that are facing high pressure so I can go with the step profile or the decay profile and so and the another results probably is to look at the the frozen layer of fraction end of the film it shows that which areas of the part are filled just and uh, just at the end of the film as you in the bulk temperature itself I have showed you that this particular section uh, where the weld line is having is completely you know frozen has its drops below that 120 134 degree centigrade of the transition temperature so it's going to be frozen by default or the good practice is that at the end of the fill none of the sections in the part should have the frozen layer more than 0.25 or maximum 0.3 that is 25 to 30 percent of the thickness of the part I'm talking about the thickness not the volume thickness of the part should not be frozen if it is frozen that is going to cause you a problem during the packing I hope these results were helpful for you to get started and I I will get the feedback and uh, I'll try to post more uh, these results 12 results into the forthcoming episode thank you for watching and thank you for your time have a great day